Hi, everybody, and welcome today. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, version 12 for the interior users, and we're going to discuss the condition schedule. My name is Tammy Zimmel, and I'm the VP of Marketing, and um, J Mike Mao, who is one of our senior training and technical support specialists, will be covering the topic today. Um, just before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping items. All lines have been muted, but we are going to answer any questions throughout the, the webinar, so please feel free to ask them. And in that questions box, you can enter all your questions below, and then we'll answer them back in the webinar. Mike, if you could go to the next slide. At the end of the webinar, we will send you a recording of the link, and then, of course, if you missed, if anybody had missed it, or anybody in your organization has missed, they will also get um, the recorded webinar if they RSVP'd. At the very end, there's a three-question survey, and really, that's really important for us, just because that way we're going to be delivering the right topics to um, our users. And then for next month's webinar, you can always go to our website. And you can also also go and watch any on-demand webinars that you missed. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Mike. Well, hi. Uh, thank you, Tammy. And uh, welcome all to uh, the EDGES webinar on the condition schedule feature. We will cover the condition schedule basics, how it is activated or deactivated, its purpose, use, and value. Then we'll cover some of the condition schedule guidelines to round out our understanding of this time-saving feature. Let's begin. What is the condition schedule and when is it used and why is it valuable to the estimator? Let's tackle the when first. The condition schedule is generally used in drywall and acoustic applications where the same exact condition is used many times over. Three or more usually, i.e. a partition types in drywall. So here is a job that we're gonna peek into, and this particular job has multiple pages, and within each page we have multiple partitions. Okay, and you can see that with all these pages and all these partitions, there's a lot of data and a lot of uh, duplicating going on. And so we, we dive a little bit deeper and let's go ahead and open up a partition. And imagine being able to adjust one of these properties in a partition A and it's existing you know, 30, 40, 80 times again and we don't have to make that same adjustment twice uh, or 50 times. And so that would be great. And yes, we call that the condition schedule. Uh, it's a feature that groups or links these identical conditions together across pages and conditions for global editing functionality. Let's look at why the feature becomes valuable. The condition schedule has post setup value, meaning its value becomes apparent after the job has been started and more valuable as the job nears completion. The condition schedule gives you global editing power across all like conditions, instantly saving lots of valuable time and energy. What are some of the common edits made through the condition schedule? Well, we just started one. Uh, in the partition, there's a number of common edits that could occur that uh, we might need to do from time to time, from uh, stud centers to stud gauge to a height of the wall, uh, right through adding uh, insulation or changing it, adding bracing, uh, adding trim, and we probably have all been here. How about the when we realize we have forgot the sound cocking and needed to turn it on, but it exists in 50 other conditions and there is no other way to, to get to those but one at a time. So the remedy, again, this condition schedule is going to take care of a lot of that. So we're going to move into where is this condition schedule set up. I'm going to head back into my building one and into my first floor. 
and I've got a number of these partitions ready to go. So we find the condition schedule is in this area of the program, and it's got a column header called schedule with some icons below. Now, your program may or may not see that column, so let's go and see where that is activated. Up under Options and Preferences, and then Program Features, we can see a checkbox for Use Condition Schedule. Checking and unchecking will deactivate or activate that uh, for your use. So I'm going to click Save, and we can see that my condition schedule is active. So how do we use the condition schedule? Well, you'll notice as I hover over one of these icons with a plus sign, a message shows add to schedule, indicating a click will add this to the schedule. And I'm going to go ahead and click that. We get a message saying you're about to do uh, such a thing, and I hit yes. And instantly, the, the image changes slightly and moves to an X. The X suggests, well, another click will remove it from the schedule. And a yes, and you can see by the indicator, that is no longer in the schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and activate these five partitions just to get them in the schedule and, and actually see where they do go and end up. Okay. So where are where is this uh, magical schedule? Well, if you look up here in the upper right hand corner, we've got add condition from schedule. This is a a function of viewing and also of adding that we'll talk about a little bit later. To understand this just a little bit more. The count over here on the left-hand side is going to show you the number of instances each one of these uh, uh, condition and conditions have linked themselves to, e to each other. And this also, you can see where hitting this Add All button is a way to add from the condition schedule. And again, we'll cover that a little bit later. So I'm going to cancel out of that. and. So let's let's see uh, this this condition schedule at work. I'm going to do a common practice. These these all five have been linked, and the common practice is to come back out to Pages and to copy and insert this page from Floor One, and we're going to make Floor Two. The beauty of this is now that we have Floor Two, when we go a little bit deeper into Floor Two. All five of these partitions uh, have arrived and are already linked to the schedule. And we're going to confirm that by clicking up on Add Condition from Schedule. And we can see that the count is now up to two. And you can imagine how fast this will grow as you add multiple pages um, with, with, added, uh, with conditions added to the schedule. So I'm going to cancel out of there. So now that we have multiple pages and, and multiple conditions uh, connected and linked into the schedule, let's go watch it in action. Double-clicking Partition A and changing a stud center to 24 inches and a, and a wall height to 9. Well, I would like to see this go all the way across all my other Partition A's. So I'm going to click OK, and a real important uh, piece of information shows up. Uh, the, this is called the condition schedule question, and we need to read this very carefully. It says, something is different about the schedule. It, it recognizes I've made a change. Click OK to change the schedule in all link conditions. Well, that's exactly what I want to do. If I didn't want to do that, my other option is unlinking, which pulls it out of the schedule, and or canceling to re rethink this whole thing out and, and try again. But I'm hitting OK because I want to see it, see if it uh, actually moved across to my other page and my other partition A. 
So we're going to go back to pages, go back into floor one, go back into my partition A, and you can see my centers are now 24, and my stud length has moved to 9. So you can see how this does affect all link conditions, and this is the basic principle of the, the condition schedule. Now let's talk about some of the rules and guidelines uh, concerning the condition schedule. And of course, when I click OK, it says, hey, if you've made any other changes, we're going to about to change the schedule, which I have not, but just OK lets us out. So the, one of the first general rules of the condition schedule is Two conditions cannot be in the schedule with the same name, but separated. The, it, the edge drives this condition schedule by the name and its contents, but again, only one name, uh, unique name per condition will show up here. So that's, that's one of the first rules. Let's look at some of the other guidelines around the condition schedule, and we're going to uh, do this in effect of creating some wall types uh, by copying linked wall types. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and insert partition E with the idea of making uh, partition F. So there's partition F, and I'm going to make a couple changes. And maybe this is 14 feet. And I'm good to go. I'm going to click OK. And I'm expecting this prompt. And so the edge is saying, all right, this has changed. You kind of started from a link condition. You've added it new. It's got a new name. Your options are to unlink it which pulls it out of the list and says, you know, you didn't mean this to be in the, in the schedule. Or link is new, suggesting that the name is unique and linking as new is a possibility. And again, cancel if I want to think it through again. So I'm going to go ahead and hit unlink just to see what happens. And you can see my partition F has showed up and it is in uh, an unlinked mode. My option is to add it to the schedule if I want to. Okay. Well, let's let's do the other option within this. I'm going to copy and insert partition E one more time, and hit copy. And I'm going to change this to partition G, and I'm going to change a few things again. And this wall is going to 20 feet. And maybe I'm going to turn on some fire caulking. And I'm going to click OK. So the same message comes up, but I'm going to go ahead and link is new. It is a new description and different than anything else. So link is new is my option. And we're going to see the results here. And now partition G is now linked to the schedule as well. So let's go peek up into the condition schedule and just see the result so far. So you can see now where I have two of the standard walls. I've got one of partition G and no F because F is not linked. So very good. All things are good. All right, so let's uh, do another uh, copy and insert, and I'm going to go ahead and copy partition G, and I'm going to have the idea that I'm making a new partition, and then I get going here, and well, this one's back to 16, this one's back to 15 foot high, and I, I'm on my merry way, and I'm just going to click OK, but I failed to rename the partition to another partition name. So I click OK, and the edge says, well, OK, what have you done here? It says, you've got partition G that's already in the schedule. You started from partition G. And so 
it's going to change the schedule according to this new partition G or this recent one because it, it assumes that's what I'm trying to do because I did not rename it. So clicking OK would actually update the schedule. OK. Now, if that's not what our intention was and we caught it now because we're reading it well, well, we could unlink it and say, I want it here, but I'm going to pull it out or I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to go ahead and give this a partition H and click OK and go through my process of link is new. So there's my partition H. Let's go check the schedule. Partition H is now in the schedule. Okay. Well, let's go do this another time. What else can happen? It's one thing. We know how it works, but now what happens if things um, may not go quite our way and we, we do another uh, situation here, have another situation? So I'm going to modify this again and make a couple changes and this is 14 foot high and you know i'm i'm been a, had a busy day and i'm going to call that partition a because i can and now with an okay the edge recognizes another situation has occurred it says that the condition name is already in use by the schedule click okay to continue but the existing name condition will assume its properties, meaning this partition A will not hold the, the new properties I just gave it. It's going to assume what was in the schedule because I had actually renamed it to something in the schedule. So again, OK. Uh, well, let's just see what OK does. I've got 16 inches and 14 feet. Let's see if that actually holds for this partition. So there's A, and I go back into A, and I'm expecting 16 inches and 14 feet. No, wow, it did exactly what it said it was going to do. It is now uh, taken on the properties of partition A. Again, so uh, we need to really be careful when we rename these uh, partitions that we read the prompts very carefully and react to them appropriately and everything is going to be good. Well, what's another way of pulling in a condition? Let's go to add condition and we're going to add a new partition from the database and add to page. Well, let's go ahead and open up this partition and I am going to call it a uh, partition I'm going to call it partition a again okay I'm going to make some modifications uh, maybe this is a uh, uh, needs to be a sturdier wall what have you and it's nine foot tall and I hit okay well you might say well wait a minute I just call it partition a another time no prompt. Well, there was no prompt because it was not looking at the schedule. You see that? So when I go ahead and add that to the schedule, it now says, well, okay, the schedule is preeminent. So me trying to add partition A to the schedule, it must take on the schedule's attributes for partition A. And I'm about to lose my 12 inches on center. So I've linked it, I go back into partition A, and it is back to 24 and 9 the way partition A began. Okay. And we're going to click OK. Now I'm going to cancel a second. If I haven't made any changes to this, a nice quick way out of a condition, else you'll be hitting that, uh, having to answer that question all the time, is just to hit cancel. I have made a change and it's going to let me right on out. All right. So let's go ahead and, and what else can happen with this condition schedule? What might we do? Well, we might come into this partition A and decide that, you know, I really don't want it to follow the first one. 
So I'm going to make my adjustments. And when I do, and when I hit OK, it's going to give me this warning. It's going to say, you're about to change all link conditions. And I don't want to do that. So I am going to just unlink it. It's going to be separate but unlinked, and everyone will be happy. So clicking unlink gives me my partition A again with my new attributes, and it has unlinked it from the schedule. So very good. So let's cover adding from the schedule. How might that look? Well, let's go back out to pages, and I'm going to create a floor three to demonstrate this add to add from schedule. So there's floor three. I'll give it a scale because it thinks I want to measure at some point. And I'm going to hit save and go a little bit deeper into floor three. And don't want to add condition, but I'm going to add from schedule. So it's a very cool feature. And if I desired, I could add all. And all of those would jump across, and all of those would come into my condition list. And if I didn't want all, I can add pieces or parts. So I'm going to start with partition B, just to show you how that will stay at the top. And I'm going to add partition A. So there is A and there is B, and I'm going to hit Add. And there is my partition B and partition A exactly in the order that I asked for it. And when I come back up into the schedule, I can now see I have, I'm up to four A's and three B's with this new addition. Very cool. So let's talk about some of the uh, actions and limitations with the, with the condition schedule. One thing you might desire is I want to, you know, partition B isn't really the real name. Okay, I, I need a better name. And so with a right click on the condition, I get to come down and hit rename condition schedule. And just for fun, and I'm going to call that BB, you know, just to be different. And I'm going to click OK. So I've renamed that. Let's go look into the schedule. And the schedule's been renamed to BB. And obviously, Condition partition B has been now renamed to BB. Okay. Uh, another important thing to know is is the schedule affects this job right up to the sections. The the schedule does not cross sections and it does not cross uh, scenarios. Uh, we've got other features that kind of get involved at that section and scenario level, and, and it would get really messy and tangly. So uh, they've limited to every section has its own uh, set of link conditions to, to keep it clean and, and separate. Well, that wraps up uh, today's webinar on the condition schedule. I believe we can see that it really could be a time saver. And, and, and a convenience with multiple uh, conditions and pages. Uh, the most critical element to remember is to read those prompts. Uh, they are instructing you on what is about to happen, and, it, and we really need to follow that uh, thoroughly. And the best time to use the schedule is from the start of the job. Uh, thank you all for your time, and I'm going to turn this back over to Tammy with any questions that have come in. Thanks for attending. Thank you, Mike. We actually do have a question. It's a really great one from Adam. Um, can you change type of material type of material using condition schedule? The type of material. Well, sure. Uh, it, it could be a couple ways, but this. I mean, I'm coming into this wall type BB. It is got a. Uh, it's got a board type of fire code, and I want it to be. Uh, boy, what's a nice one? Well, I'll just make it uh, Type X. Type X is a common name for that. And I'm going to click OK. So I now want to update the entire, all of my BBs to Type X. Let's go watch that happen. 
So I head back into my pages. I go to floor one that we haven't been to in a while. There's BB, and I come on in, and there's my type X. Uh, and that happened to every BB, whether it's 5, 20, or 100. So good question. Any other questions? That is all the questions. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, thanks for the question, and everybody have a great day. Just a reminder, I'm, oh, I guess we do have another one from Adam. If you have floors with different heights, do you then need to label every wall? Floor, well, floors with different heights, meaning, yes, uh, partitions that do vary heights, is one of those parameters that is, uh, you know, elemental to a wall. So as I might change a, a stud height because the wall has changed, this will affect uh, partition A, and and it's it's got to go along. So all the A's become uh, 12 feet, or you need to unlink one of the partition, this partition A, to keep it at 12, and everyone else stays at nine. And uh, Mike, um, for example, it's partition A, 12 feet. Uh huh. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, yeah, it's the the length of the stud is just again one of those elements the condition schedule is tracking. So for it to be identical to all the other partition A's, that that 12 foot stud needs to be the same. And if you were needing a wall with a different height, you'd have to you'd have to change the name. For instance, this would be uh, A12, saying that's going to be a 12 foot height. And with OK, now I can link that as new. It is partition A, but I've I'm pulling that out as a 12 foot stud, and all the other A's are staying out as a nine. Great. I think that's what he's looking for. Um, okay, perfect. Um, that's the last of the questions. Um, so if anybody does have any other further questions about this topic, please feel free to email or call us because we are here to help you. Um, and again, thank you for attending the webinar and have a great day, everyone.